So, I was up in the middle of the night last night when I smelled a terrible smell coming from my son's room. Figuring that he had pooped his pants, I had grabbed the diaper and was prepared to go and change it. When I opened the door, I saw something much worse. There was shit all over the walls. <laughs> and he was also covered in shit. Hands, face, but all the places you'd expect and none of the ones you would. And while my wife gave him a bath and I was cleaning shit off the walls, staring at that spiral, I saw something much deeper. Much, much deeper. And I called out to it, and it answered back. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for later tonight's show. Uh, hey, guys, welcome to Between the Rolls, uh, the Tuesday talk show where we talk about random things. I mean, I don't know what shit talking to you is gonna be about you know that seems hopefully this strange. doesn't become a shit show so <laughs> is. You're too late. but we'll get to that later for right okay. now uh we'll go around and introduce some people and talk about uh the games that we had last week frank why don't we start with you <laughs> oh no no okay uh david why don't you introduce <laughs> <us>? <laughs> nice <laughs> Do you want to go back to Frank? Or... No, no, no. You go ahead. <laughs> okay. You've moved uh, up. You're now my favorite person on here, David. Go for it. Oh. I was like number uh, four. <laughs> <laughs> hey, on this show, you were number one until mm. you left. Yeah. Well, I am David. I am one of the newer hobos. And uh, yeah, I've been playing with these guys for a little while. And um, I, I, I keep coming back. I'm a glutton for punishment. So, speaking of gluttons for punishment, <laughs> Frank, Frank, you receive Carol's emails every single day, at least 3,000 of them. At least. How do you, <laughs> and you still do this. Frank, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, the first thing is uh, successful managing of your deleted items. Uh, when you have her on auto delete is the key to success <laughs> follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to buy cool stuff it's there uh, i'm frank normally the host uh dm every once in a while i'm head wound harry uh tonight kyle was taking the helm because i was not expected to do this at all uh but here i am uh we'll see how i do from a player perspective on uh warlock patrons Probably poorly. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> You're muted. You're muted. <clears throat> show. Luckily, patrons are all about the DM side of things. And speaking of BMs, Carol, why don't you introduce yourself? Nice. Oh. <laughs> Dude, really? Shit show. Bowel movements. Eh? Eh? I Tying it. it all together. I caught it. Why'd you put it with me? I mean, geez. So hi everyone, I'm Carol. I'm a miniature painter, longtime player, sometime GM. And yeah, I'm here for tonight's shit show because apparently it is. Literally. Oh my gosh. I don't know why you hate me what? so much. Mr. Handy, is he the uh talking turd on uh South Park? Mr. Hanky. Mr. Hanky, I should get him back on here. <laughs> All right, but guys, we have a bunch of stuff to talk about before we get to the actual fun stuff. Uh, you can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. You can see our stuff on YouTube. You can buy the crap if you want. Up to you. Who are you? Pitch your current projects, shows, work. <laughs> First topic, episode 95, Woebegone Tower, Dash David. Oh, David, no. hey, that was the Thursday game. Uh, I tried to get Frank to write a uh, uh, a caveman one shot. I, I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> uh, no, uh, that's so not what happened. That is in the works. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Get what did you end up playing instead, David? Okay, well, we ended up playing uh, Well Beyond Tower, and yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I got to play a character that I, I created once uh for like a one shot with a friend of mine didn't touch it again thought i'd break it out for this one yeah it turned out to be the right move <laughs> comedy ensued so so anyway oh, yeah uh, what was it what was it tell what us was it? tell us uh okay so our story begins there was uh frank what was it again <laughs> uh you guys were chasing a murderer 
out of a yes. coastal town. Yes, we chased a murderer out of a coastal town, followed it, or he or her, her. it was her, uh, along the coast, and uh, <laughs> uh, approached some cliffs. <laughs> and as we were approaching cliffs or whatever, yeah, the the murderer was uh, pretty wily and sent a... Uh, uh, a herd of blue asses our way. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's not right. Blue burrows. There you go. Donkeys or burrows. like asses? Did they fly? Did they flap? At first, I thought it was the the first, but it turned out to be the latter. So, <laughs> so anyway, so uh, yeah, so Heidi, our rogue, uh, ended up. Uh, she didn't get trampled, but I mean, she had to. She had to pull some cunning actions to get out of the way. And then uh, we also had this uh, this uh, hell of a climb to make. After that, <laughs> kept uh, crit failing on that and falling. So that was a lot of fun. Well, speak for yourself. Took them forever. It did take us forever. It felt like it. It felt like half the episode. <laughs> All right, now, for my own information, how long did this one shot last? Two hours? A little over two hours? Two hours. Like, just under two hours. So, yeah. Damn, <sighs> Kyle. He still, <laughs> even with our shenanigans, he still pulled it off. <laughs> like, like two hours and ten minutes, if I recall. Well, maybe it was about two hours. It was close. I'll be teaching I, the master I'll take class the later. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what this between the rules is about, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. You're stupid. Uh, no. Uh, so as it turned out, we uh, finally make our way up the cliffs. Uh, there was uh, when we reached the the vista of the cliff. I guess you'd call it. Uh, there was uh, a plains area. Well, uh, lots of uh, grass pasture land. We end up. Uh, Checking out uh, a, herd, a herd of war cow. It's made of war cows. Oh, yeah. Cows. Yeah. And uh, noticing a tower, we uh, decided to investigate the tower. The murderer was supposedly in there. <laughs> Turns out well, we, she was. We did that in five minutes when she started hucking rocks at us from the second floor window. Oh, yeah. You yeah, are. That was seems closed. like it's a very easy clue to follow there. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, the, the the tracks on the inside of the tower, you know, after we managed to take, what, 10, 15 minutes to try to get the port call us up? They took forever, man. <laughs> that game could have been an hour 40. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> well, no, nobody... Wa I mean, I couldn't let go because I was the strongest of the bunch, but, I mean, you know, neither uh, Carol nor Heidi wanted to duck under that, that port call us. <laughs> No, we decided who we had. You. <laughs> who, and it ended up being me. Yeah. The dice Poor rolls were not kind to those guys. No, no, they weren't. No, no, they really weren't, were they? <laughs> so as we're sliding in, we end up, like, uh, blowing all the, the dust away and obscuring all the, the footprints thing that were sent out as clues to tell us where to go. But, yeah. <laughs> that Poor didn't bastards. work out. <laughs> <laughs> Really, the issue we, we figured. So. so, so we explored the the first level of the tower, uh, where we veered off and found like half of the tower had broken away. And within this area, we ended up having our first encounter. I can't remember the type of creatures that we had. They were almost like quasits, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we had our first encounter there. And just as we finished that, we meet. The asshole tur turtle droid. <laughs> oh, which an uh, asshole! He offered you soup. Yeah, <laughs> after he after he tried to thunder wave us out of there. I know he didn't. He succeeded. We all, and he thunder waved himself. I remember he didn't make the roll. Yeah, yeah, he ended up on his back, spinning around. Friggin' <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh man. So so yeah the. The hilarity ensued with that after that point. <laughs> so, so I ended up saying, "Screw the turtle, leave him there. He's <laughs> on his back. Let's go try to explore the rest of the tower." 
Uh, yeah, uh, narrow corridors and uh, barbarian and spiked armor. Yeah, that doesn't. That doesn't. That doesn't mix narrow too well. Stairwell. It was a narrow. Yeah, a narrow corridor and the narrow stairwell with the trap stair. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, trap stair. Uh, let's see. There was also a snake trap <laughs> that slowed us down quite a bit. Yeah, you guys yeah. ground to a halt there. We ground to a halt. <laughs> it was just like, oh my god. It was just like next time a character with more of an AOE kind of thing. But then again, you know, I wasn't thinking. It's just like I'm resistant to poison. I just kind of went and knocked him away. You were third in line, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. could. Up, but knock everyone else in line it'll be just fine it'll be fine I had, I had no issue swapping i'm playing i was playing the cleric here and i could do range but we didn't swap so yeah yeah we didn't swap until i had it fell. Like, <laughs> fallen <laughs> you disappeared back to the turtle and then heidi was like at seven hit points and we she switched up and there i'm going that well now what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So what happened was after we made it past the stakes, there was another narrow corridor. Uh, apparently, the the clues that we had was that there was uh, moisture coming in from the walls. Uh, there was pa patch of moisture on the, was it the landing or the stairs? It but, was the uh, hallway and the two murals on murals. either side. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sensing that that wasn't going to be quite right. Uh, yeah, the dwarf, without a running start, decided to try to jump it. Of course, I failed that save, fell right through, ended up falling to the, the first floor. And uh, I Where finally you were just offered soup. You know, yes. I said, screw it. And I, I went to check on the turtle. He was up, he was fixing his stew. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I told the, told him to hold the stew for me. I'll be back. So we went uh, through the tower, uh, made our way up. Uh, yeah, I raged, got across that time. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we ended up springing uh, a trap with uh, two statues that uh, were animated. And uh, we had an encounter with that. Uh, as we had finished that, uh, I had managed to break open one of the statues and uh, a hand had had been exposed and upon that was a ring. So I ended up taking the ring uh, off the the uh, statue and uh, I was just holding on to it for the party. Um, so anyway, we... Um, for the party. For the party. <laughs> no, it gets better, Kyle. Ahead. It gets better. I'm waiting. Let's go. So <laughs> anyway... We go into the final room because uh, time was getting short. Uh, more of the tower had been broken away as we re as we breached this room. Uh, there we see there's like uh, an anwar or a, and a bed uh, and uh, a rope made of uh, sheets leaning out. So we figured our murderer was climbing down that. Did we actually see her, Frank? You saw her when you uh, went after her. Yeah, so we we went they after were sprinting her. towards the workhouse. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we so I was gonna try to make my way down <laughs> uh, the the stairs. So I was, I mean, the the rope um, ladder to get to the next ledge, and I can't remember if I actually made it. Probably no, didn't. We, we we called did it not as do a, it because it was going to be death if you choked it and your rolls weren't that good. Right. <laughs> there was a clue on the ring of a symbol of a cloud, so I figured it had something to do with, uh, you know, maybe free fall or flying or something did like that. Did you jump out and cast fog cloud or something? <laughs> No. no, no, but I put the ring on and I was just like, well, let me try this. So I just jump up and Frank's like, nothing happened. And I was just like, I'm not going to try it and all that. But hindsight, I realized that it would have taken me two hours to attune to that damn ring to use it. So if I would have tried to use it, I would have just fallen to my death had I even figured it out what it was. So... <laughs> <laughs> So, so we end the episode uh, as we're, we make our way to where we can see, uh, see outside the tower, or did we make it outside the tower? I you were on remember. the landing where the snakes were at, and you watched. We're, 
We watched. There's yes. the <laughs> <laughs> the turtle Patrick. drinking drinking his soup, flipping me off uh, with uh, the the murderer on their mounts, just riding their away war in the sunset. Mount. Their war cow mounts, riding <laughs> away in the sunset. So, but uh, it it was a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of mistakes were made, so it made for a really fun episode. It was pretty. Fun. Yeah. It was. It was, yeah. two, it was two hours long, Kyle. Two it up. <laughs> two it up, Frank. <laughs> but was it as filled with as much deep lore and backstory and amazing monsters that kill the party? It, it, the the turtle was kind of unique. Because yeah, the turtle there, was actually cool. Yeah, there yeah. was a gap after the thunder wave. There was a gap. So he he would have to jump and be at risk to fight as would the tortle so instead they broke out in parlay after he fell from the second floor and yeah. uh he was offered soup because it yeah. smelled really good yeah you know so, what we all soup was soup it after. he did all have soup after i remember that i forget mm -hmm. what soup it was it was chicken stew, noodle actually it was like a beef stew or that's something. right yeah. uh, war, war cow, cow stew, stew. War cow stew. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but uh, no, it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it, but I swear to God, if that turtle had gotten that, that table across and was using it as a bridge, I was going to ra rage and just shatter that table. My <laughs> Frank, Frank, I really liked the, the statues. That was a tough fight. Um, man, it was very creepy because when we opened them up, we found out there were people in them. Yeah, that was a uh, something, I don't think it was tome of foes but it was what whatever the third one is uh i i went monster shopping uh and used monster manual tome of foes and volos what is it volos guys yes volos monsters so i used all three books nice so, nice yeah and the creatures that suctioned themselves in that first encounter that was from uh uh tome of foes so <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it it was a great encounter. I I I enjoyed it. You know, uh, the first one. And for then for it being two hours, I, I I get what you're laying down, David. You don't yeah. have to say it. You don't have to say. Well, it. Kyle, there were more dangers in that tower <laughs> that we could have faced. You know, Kyle, what... you can always ask Heidi if she thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi's dead to me. Shut up. <laughs> Going on to someone who's far more amazing uh, uh, and nicer than Heidi, Carol, why don't you tell us what happened during the campaign on Saturday? Heidi sucks. Fuck you, Frank. Hey, hey Frank, Frank, if you write that caveman thing, I was serious. I really want to see Heidi dragging Kyle around by his hair. Oh, I can do it. <laughs> they got to be in it. So what happened on Saturday? Um, well, hey, you know, we are the worst party ever. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to show where the party composition is perfect. You got your cleric, your magic user, your tank, your sneaky it people, is. and your charisma <laughs> people. But right. the role playing is <laughs> fucking everyone <laughs> Oh my! Jesus. I like the sorry. Go, Carol. I like the fact that people do role play their characters. I mean, it's a role playing game, and I, I really that's one of the things I enjoy is that people really get into the role playing and really put a lot of themselves into their characters for, for the campaign. Um, but that was legitimately scary. So uh, basically, we started that. All, we ended up we ended up going down to the we, we got together went down to the basement to kill a little bit of the beginning out and there were three paths we could go. <laughs> Stop, Frank, there were three pathways we could go. So of course, what did we do? We split up the party because we can cover more ground that way. Well, course, no. Me being it me makes sense in that situation, I think. Uh, <laughs> Not to the okay. DM. <laughs> so me being the newbie, of course, I'm the one that gets stuck going down one of the passageways alone. And I'm playing a bird here. 
I'm not really a frontline fighter. I can't really wreck shit. I can get, I do have a get out of jail free card with greater invisibility, but still. Um, and thank God those things were easy to hit. So I took the middle path by myself. And then was it Blake and Minis went down one way and Dewey and Lucas, because the best bros forever went down the other way. To be fair, I did try to send Lucas with you because I figured you could yeah. use the help more than I did. And actually, and actually to be fair, too, um, Blake actually made that suggestion because I'm sitting here going, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, what are we going to do? Um, and he's like, you don't, don't look that confident. I'm like thinking in my head, I'm not that, I, Carol's not that confident, but she'll do what she has to do. Taryn will always do what she has to do for the benefit of the party. So, and the I'm like, greater I, good. I can good. <clears throat> yeah, so we're not on patrons yet, Frank. Hold on a second. So basically, we got down there. What did we all find? We all found dark mantles. All three of us. So uh, down all three pathways. Um, thank you, said thank God. They didn't realize they were that easy to hit because basically you have to shoot at them with this disadvantage because it's darkness. They cast. They have darkness over the whole thing, so you can't see them. So I said, I cast Great Invisibility, so it couldn't see me to try to even up the odds a bit. Um, but they aren't that hard to hit. So I actually killed mine before the others. Oh, no, you got yours done first, Kyle. And then you went to go help, of course, Perpetua and that side instead of me, which made me laugh. Again, like, hey, hey, they oh, were 70 feet away. You were 210, yeah, 150 plus the 60 feet we made. But there was no way for you to actually know that. Yeah. They were 10 feet, you're right. You might see the darkness coming out. Come to the, I forgot they were that far, that close to the beginning. Um, <coughs> yeah, time, time had a really interesting thing here. Apparently, I could move really fast. Well, you were by yourself, and you didn't have short, stubby legs. That's true. Can I move that fast though in one round? <laughs> I'd like to move 150. So, but basically they went to help Perpetua and I killed mine in like two rounds, which I was shocked at. And I had invisibility. So I went to the end of my row. There was nothing there. I was like, ah, that's kind of disappointing, but not really. Well, there was had... something there. Rubble. There was, yeah, there was nothing. To Poor make... Betty Rubble. She was just lying there dead in the floor and Carol just stepped right over. <laughs> so, we, we, did, we did not really go further down the, basically, the far right. Correct. The left is the one we kept going. And we get down and we found a, uh, <clears throat> we found the cages full of skeletons. Mm -hmm. By this point, we're all together. So we decided to just pick that one and keep it keep going. We found cages full of animated skeletons. Let me put that in there. Um, and there was some discussion on what to do with them. Uh, Blake did not want to kill him. He wanted to try to figure out why there were skeletons here that were animated, which honestly is perfectly fine. Taryn is kind of just in that too, being the storyteller and, and such that she is. Um, but we really did not have any means to figure that out, I don't think, as a group. We did not have Speak with Dead, which mm -hmm. would have been uh, unfortunately, we don't. So other people just wanted to kill them to find out they were probably the right ones uh, when we got further on down the road. Hey, 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 hey. There's no right or wrong in D&D. &D. No, no, just no. just good old fun. That's true. Well, hindsight is twenty twenty. So in hindsight, we probably would have been smarter to kill them. Or, yes, or to check out the table. But the funny thing is I thought the table was empty because you think you just kind of you know, with your passive perception, you kind of see that key that's sitting there. But none of us said we were looking at the table, so that's... Side note, the... everybody, know your DM and how they like to handle things. That is or good. handle things Say, poorly. Yeah, or... <laughs> because I am learning that with Frank, you do have to really be specific. Like, you know, when we walk in a room that I... Yeah, you know, as my rogue, I have to actually say, hey, I want to make a perception check or investigation check on everything in the freaking room. Like that carpet that's sitting there. Was that so hard? 
Ever that was character. amazing. I'm sorry I missed the last between the rolls because <laughs> I really wanted to talk about letting Carol onto the carpet, oh knowing full oh, well what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> You realize it's like two Saturday sessions in a row that it had a character. Basically, the first one was Taryn with the freaking gelatinous cube. I triggered that. And then last weekend, it was, or two Saturdays ago, it was my freaking rogue triggering the damn carpet. And the results were... Never stand on the carpet. Carol. Oh, my God. The results Never. were bad. <laughs> Be really careful. There's this beautiful golden chest. It's probably a mimic. On a carpet, <laughs> probably a rug of smothering. Next <laughs> to a couple suits is. of armor. Those are animated <laughs> suits of armor. I put. Oh, all what do you guys want to do? We leave the room and shut the door and never look back. <laughs> so, you know, and I said with the statues from the other scenario, too, I looked and like, oh, those are gonna totally animate. Every freaking room I go in, the statues always animate and try to kill us. And, and you said that out loud. And I, I, did, I, I did not dissuade you in any no, way, shape, or form. Metagaming, in reality. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I know it was told, it was, it was me speaking, not my character, to be clear. But so, yeah, I know what is it about me, Trippy Trap? So, we, anyways, we, uh, Luke, who is it, Lucas and Meniz, they took out some of the skeletons are, uh, uh, on our way through, but because we all left, they decided they didn't want to wait there and keep killing them. Although, they said, I didn't have a lot to deal with them, and they had it in hand, so I left them there in hopes that they would just finish them off and then catch up. <clears throat> well, they left some of the skeletons that we, um, <clears throat> we they, they reappeared not too long after because somebody, somebody, we don't know who, but there's somebody in there, let them out of the cage. Oh, Somebody an NPC. Yeah, there's an NPC uh, that's that's in there, and it's not somebody who was there seven days or five days ago. Whenever the battle with all the gnolls, because we found a bunch of dead gnolls in there too, and clearly yeah. something bad happened. We saw drag marks and footsteps, but the only thing I said, the only sorry Frank, but there's no timestamps on footsteps. I actually figured they were from the battle days ago. There's no way I think, there's no way really we would have known. Stop. What the hell was with David? I mean, Frank, okay, I get it. But David, what the hell was with David? <laughs> it's, it's great. I love the mystery of who is flodogging us. And uh, basically, the others scouted, and three of us fought the skeletons, and we took care of them. And that was about it. We're, we're basically taking a rest while people are scouting and see what happens in this old tiny dungeon crawl well, i think we decided that um <coughs> dewey and perpetua are going to end up Back getting screwed skeleton. over <laughs> oh, no. i have anything to say about it you're resting be quiet uh, anyway <laughs> thank you carol i appreciate it very much do i need to throw up my uh. virtual background again <laughs> uh, sorry guys sorry guys uh the counseling has been doing wonders for me and i've been able to start saying nice things to shitty people it's the drugs and, and i am and, not a shitty person I think all it, right I think and he's prepping me finally finally the best <laughs> of all of us who will end a D, D one shot at two hours because he cares more about his time frame <laughs> And throwing together a complete, entertaining, enjoyable game for the soul. We have Frank. Frank, uh, you uh, played a drop-in session at the very last minute on Sunday with Frank, 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 and Frank. Frank, Frank, and Jill. Anyway, uh, tell us about that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, before Murder Hobo Inc., uh, there was something called Minions of Haboo. Uh, I was asked uh, a few years ago to go ahead and DM for a group of individuals I'd never met online. I hadn't done any online gaming before. I thought, sure, what the hell. Uh, so these guys uh, went under the city 
uh, fighting off cult members. Uh, and like every normal D&D group, uh, attendance became sporadic. People couldn't make it. I couldn't make it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and the group broke off. Well, uh, thank you, uh, COVID-19. Uh, they have some time, and they wanted to see if they could pick back up. Hold so, on one second. Corvid is the name of the werewolf, <laughs> vampire, and true human in the, uh, oh, what's that Kate Beckinsale movie with the vampires? Underworld. <laughs> underworld. Underworld. Yes. Which, hey, they were in the underworld, so very That's nice. Right. We're uh, talking about COVID because yes. this is reality, not fantasy. I mean, come on, guys. We've got, we've got uh, crows outside. I always go Corvid. So, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, COVID-19. Anyway, uh, these guys, we jacked them up to third level. Uh, because they were successful against the minions of Habu, they had some unwanted attention, stalker slash uh, price on their heads. So they decided to go off and do what they wanted to do in the first place, which was become hardy adventurers. Uh, we set them off onto the road. Uh, they got to meet a caravan master. Uh, one of the teenage boys that was playing uh, almost got married to uh, an Amazonian warrioress. Uh <laughs> They had. They continued with their shitty roles that they had. Uh, they chased down a, a gambler. Uh, there was an animated scarecrow. Everybody shit the pants. Uh, fun was had by all. Uh, they've been given four different scenarios that they can go off and explore. And they have chosen, uh, why do the villages keep disappearing in sinkholes? scenario so uh as we continue if this becomes a regular sunday edition uh that will be the next one they are going to an area where villages are being swallowed up by the ground with no explanation but i think we all know what it is bards it's got to be bards <laughs> bards <laughs> but yes these... they create sinkholes all the time they yeah. tell a bad joke and it just drops and everything else oh, follows. Oh my lord, right. if you guys do that writing right now, you would that a comment is just way too appropriate. That's Not right. the joke, the dropping people into a M hole in the Mages twenties, Bards ones. Uh but yeah, these guys uh it's a bigger group uh than what we're used to. Uh, but they're all family, except for AJ. AJ's a family friend. But uh, we've got Frank Sr., Frank, Frank Jr., uh, his brother Jason, Jason's son, uh, who was, uh, God, his name was Haggis Crapstain. Haggis <laughs> Crapstain. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yes, and then he ate yeah. somebody's heart. Uh, but he's the one that almost married the Amazonian princess who licked the blood off his uh hand uh all in all uh it is uh pure hilarity two hours <laughs> <laughs> well hey, now to be fair running a campaign for two hours and the campaign <laughs> players working together i can forgive that i mean you know yeah. two hours we don't have four hours in a day guys yeah no i uh it, it, it i wanted to get them to a little bit of hilarity, they shot each other, they stabbed each other. It was just a standard murder hobo ink clusterfuck. Uh, but a shout out to at Geekspiel uh, for introducing me to the world of online gaming two years ago. Uh, uh, they're still going. Uh, we're still going. Everybody's happy. So uh, join us this Sunday, happy. maybe. I don't know. If not, it'll be a one shot. So back to you, Kyle. Uh, we're all good here. <laughs> All right. Second topic. Patrons for warlocks. One. Patrons in general. Whoa, what 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 was that? That's where you fuck over the players. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's that's in Carrie, I'm so sorry if you ever get a chance to watch this. I'm really sorry. <laughs> She's listening to it in the other room. <laughs> Why? There's much boringer shows that are more entertaining to watch. Somebody has to make sure the sound works. Oh, that's true. Because you... <laughs> I, I'm producing, you know, and I have a history of fucking up the sound. It's very iffy. You know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But back.
back on the topic here. Uh, introduced it at the beginning. I don't know if you caught on to that because it was clever little monologuing on my device. And most of these people are too harebrained or dull to actually catch on to my brilliance. Simplistic. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, I don't want Carol to hear that word. She can't hear you through her helmet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tonight we're going to be talking about something that um, is a bit of a bargain between the player and the DM themselves, and that's patrons for when the player decides they want to play a warlock, or maybe just something trying to make a deal or something like that in particular. Um, Carol... You can talk forever. Why don't you tell us a little bit about patrons? <laughs> what, what you like about them and maybe what you dislike about them. Oh, well, you want me to go first, all right? Well, I want to keep it simple and then get complicated with the other people. Fine. Jeez. I hey, mean, I'm sorry. I'm not. Patrons, what can I say about them? Uh, they are a great way to fuck over your players. A uh, great way to give plot to your players, actually. Um, what do I like? That's what I like about them as, uh, as ultimately, yeah, they, they, they're a great plot device. Um, what I maybe not like as much about them is it feels like a lot of relationships with a lot of patrons. Um, I don't know. I keep thinking the last few that I've come across, I've watched Critical Role, um, and both those patrons were sketchy and they ended up basically, spoiler alert, getting dumped, because you can take and actually railroad a party uh, to what that patron wants. And a lot of them, I think with that sort of relationship, it's not really a healthy relationship. I mean, it can't, you can do that, you can run however you want, but it just, I get just get this feeling where it's a pact and they have to work for this patron and, you know, and if they don't, Maybe it's kind of like a clerk, but I, I don't feel it's the same sort of thing. I feel like the patron is a bit more controlling. That's just my take on it. So sure. there, moving I, on right. to, hey, you know what? That was great, Carol. You did a great job. If you check underneath your seat, there's tape to the bottom of it. There's a little biscuit treat uh, if you want it. Um, <laughs> so we'll go over to David now. That'd be a good trick. Oh, man. I think Wouldn't I it? <laughs> <laughs> I made um, a deal with the devil in order to uh, be with, able to do with that. With your patron. <laughs> so you're right. <laughs> to, uh, what? David, uh, make uh, a deal patrons. with the devil. Grab your fiddle and go to Georgia. <laughs> so. I, I'm more of a the tuba player who uh, made a deal with the devil. Gotcha. Gotcha. And that's, I got, I got a patron for you. So, um, yeah. Warlocks are, are great, but there's some. It's something that you should discuss with your DM. That would that would be a good thing to do before you decide to play one, because mm -hmm. essentially you're not just you're playing a warlock, but you're bringing an NPC into the game. So and the the DM has to be ready for that because they're going to be the ones controlling your patron. I mean, if you're you're playing a warlock, thinking you're going to control your patron in a game. Yeah, that, that's not going to happen. Oh, come on. Don't ruin so, fun. <laughs> so, but, uh, no, I mean, Warlock, I mean, next to a Bard is one of my favorite classes to play. Uh, one of my first characters that I started playing when I started playing D&D &D again, uh, just, just a little over a year ago, um, was a Warlock. And um, I don't know why, I just gravitated to her to it uh i think you're i evil. like you're basically evil <laughs> I, was, I was chaotic <laughs> so. blast, so. hey a goblin warlock had some appeal to it and that's what i was so anyway yeah he ended up becoming a casino owner so <laughs> but uh no but i mean i just gravitated toward it uh unfortunately uh the dm that i was playing with wasn't able to continue with uh the the campaign um he didn't really role play the the patron out too much uh it could have been because of the patron that i selected i was playing uh, uh pa my patron was a great old one so oh. yeah they're they're kind of hands off anyway so 
Uh, so I think he was going with that, but you know, uh, a DM can get real creative with, um, a player's, uh, patron. I mean, because depending on who you have your pact with, whether it's Fey, Fiend, or, uh, an old God, you know, uh, just, it depends on the, the play style that, that you as the player wants to play and what the DM uh, would like to do as a NPC. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's a great dichotomy because again, you're, um, you don't know what the hell's gonna happen. Everything is in the mind of your DM. Uh, this bargain that you have with, uh, with your patron, I mean, you're not a wizard, you know, you didn't study for these powers or anything like that. You're not a sorcerer. You're not born with them. You know, you're basically stealing power is basically what you're doing. Uh, whether you, whether I think you, stealing. you know I think it's stealing, David. What's There's that? A, there, you're not stealing it. There's a price. There is a price. There is a <laughs> price. So you, you may think you're stealing power, but you're going to pay for it in the end. So... I mean, nothing is for free when you play a warlock. So, you know, so be prepared because, yeah, you're going to get screwed over eventually, especially <laughs> if you're Fae or if you're Fiend, you know. So, but I, I've got some good ideas. So when when we get to that part of the show, I mean, it's all, yeah, I, I love this. Judging stuff. by the time left, we'll probably just stick with it in general. And if there's more ideas, we'll hit on it later. Yeah. Uh, Frank, you are the DM who can hit the time limit every single time. <laughs> I'm sure you've had lots of players who tried to play Warlocks and you spent a great two hours role-playing their patrons and and stopped right at the two-hour mark, not a second longer. <laughs> I'm sorry, does it sound like I'm obsessing? I'm, I'm not, I'm not. So that's two hours. Oh to be yes. fair, the only reason I keep it at two hours is to go ahead and keep our audience uh, conjectured uh appropriately now our players uh we could do four to six hours and just run with it uh but but because we love you fans i like to keep it at two hours because you got other shit to do and if we're longer than a conan movie mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from my standpoint uh a warlock's patron offers me the opportunity to meddle a little bit too much uh, and despite some misgivings, I really don't like to railroad the players that much. And with the patrons, uh, I would rather play it fast and loose so that the players feel they have more um, control over the situation until they get to a very high level. And then it's like, uh, as Carol and David have pointed out, a yoink, uh, yoink. Under the rug they go, because <laughs> now you owe me and uh, payment is due. So, uh, but I, for lower level ones, uh, I really don't feel the need to meddle, even though I would like to. Um, I just try and stay hands off. Sure. All right. Now we have a bunch of different warlock patrons. Some of them lend mm -hmm. themselves to reflavoring and introducing a new uh, concept into the world. Uh, and as Frank I think is going to mention uh, he likes to give Warlock's power and then be able to take it away. One of my other questions was, you know, when the Warlock gives someone the power, is it gone for good or can the Warlock take it back? And one of my other um, things was, do you let your players pick their patron? Obviously, they can pick Fiend, Fey, Great Old One, but at the end of the day, do they really end up choosing... Well, I'm going to serve Haster or um, Morgan Le Fay or something like that. And David, since you wanted to jump into it, tell me your favorite Warlock patron. Why? And then answer those other two questions. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, I think my favorite uh, Warlock uh, patron is probably a, a great old one. I like the extended spell list that comes with it. Uh, like scary more... monsters <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so yeah the whole insanity thing yeah uh, i mean thematically i mean i i'm drawn to that so but yeah 
when we when we got to uh, when we mentioned about creating our own patrons, I mean, I just let my imagination go wild and mm-hmm. all that because there's so many other uh, you know old old god like things out there. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, for different different types of monster monstrosities and aberrations and stuff like that. Then you got those that you can get get power from too. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, as long as they're a source of power, you know, it doesn't have to be a deity, you know. Mm-hmm. And part of the bargain could be that, look, I want to get to deity and you're gonna help me. So, you know. Sure. And but, so do your players pick uh or would you let your players pick their patrons specifically or do you want to bring in your own homebrew throw them off their feet i mean if they pick up some old book and begin reading who knows what kind of horrible eldritch thing is inside of it what do you prefer uh i mean i'd never thought about it before but Mm -hmm. since you guys brought it up i would like to have it if i was running a game they don't get to pick their patron the patron picks them, you know, and it depends on what device that you have to make that connection, whether it be, uh, you know, a tome or, you know, something happens, you know, you're in, mm-hmm. you're in, infected with a piece of an old God that's been floating, uh, you know, floating through the, um, you know, the universe and stuff like that. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I don't think I would let them, choose you know <laughs> so yeah. you, you know as a player when i first started playing oh yeah it's just like oh i'm gonna choose this i'm gonna do that you know mm-hmm. but talk it over with your dm first man get those ground rules down down <laughs> how, how would you feel if you had to earn the right to have him be the patron like you had, I, you had to sub- submit to an underling before i'd like that oh you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as a as a going with a fiend a or fay or something like that, you have to work your way up the summer or winter court in order to mm-hmm. uh, get the power. Oh, oh that. yeah, thing I do. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> write that down. Uh, that's not actually alcohol because I can't handle my liquor these days anymore. <laughs> but Scott, if you're at home, please drink for me twice as much because it wasn't a horrible idea. Uh, Carol. Don Julio. Don Julio. Okay. The patron of Scott. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fiend, let me tell you that, with 130 proof. Mm. Anyway, Carol, uh, your favorite warlock patron. Um, do warlocks keep their powers, and should they be able to choose, or do you prefer to homebrew something? Would you prefer to homebrew something? Go ahead. All right, so favorite. You know, I'm going to refer to the one from our two big games. I just love this concept so much. Uh, basically, our warlock, and it's not me, create, basically his um, patron is a female uh, fae named Lady A. And he, has, he actually fell in love with her. And she made him, you know, she gave him fae aspects and such. Mm-hmm. Um, part of her thing. But the neat thing about that is that he has a book that she'll write it, that he'll write to her and she'll write back in. And if he pisses her off by looking at another woman or something, she gets mad at him and cuts it off. It's, it's a really interesting relationship. But I, once again, it's, it's the whole thing. I feel like it's really one-sided here. And, um, you know, handle with care. But I really love that, that idea that he came up with. Um, and he chose it. So I'm actually, to answer the question, would I, you know, let, let the player choose? Yeah, I work with them, you know, like session zero or even come, you know, uh, even in their backstories, if you play with backstories. Um, and I like to play games with backstories uh, from my players. So I'd absolutely want to work with them at the very least or get their idea first of what they want to do and what they're shooting for and i would i wouldn't have any objections to them picking because he picked his as far as i know i don't think he rolled that you have the whole list of backgrounds in the book and a lot of what we did in that game was we rolled up the backgrounds from um oh shoot which one is it i don't remember which D 
book it is that has all the backgrounds and all oh, the different Xanathar's things. Guide. It's I think it's Xanathar's. Um, what was the third question? The third part? I well, remember. you answered it already. Um, there was oh. the keeping of powers, but uh, oh, with your warlock, he apparently, if he looks at another woman, he loses all his power oh. and apparently has to go crawling back on his hands and knees is what it sounded like. Actually, he doesn't lose his powers. She just doesn't talk to him in the book and makes him paranoid and such, but he could still cast spells. It's not a total breakage of, of the pact. I have such a good but, idea about this stuff right now. But it did come up right I'm just pulling we... it up from old relationships. Oh, <laughs> that bitch Susan. She'd make a great face. <laughs> <laughs> but if you but if, okay, like, away with someone else and get married or whatever, yeah, she would totally yank his powers. And I don't think, the way it's been played, I don't think there'd be any coming back from it. I mean, maybe after a long period of time, but she doesn't seem very forgiving. Oh, and she actually showed up, too. She actually showed up. Uh, we went to a part, the very last session we had before our hiatus, we had um, that we went to a party. And she showed up as his date in a form of another effect. That's the interesting thing in the form of the woman that he originally asked to go to the party because he didn't think she was showing up. And that's when she got mad and stopped writing to him. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just find Jenny green teeth and I'll all be fine. It's fine, guys. <laughs> All right, and Frank, your favorite uh, uh, warlock patron. Uh, obviously, you had a great idea with the working your way up. How does that work, you think? Well, the, whenever I hear about a warlock patron, I always think of Vigo the Carpathian from Ghostbusters 2. Uh, and I envision your patron being able to speak with you in a, a number of unusual ways. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, Vigo the Carpathian was cursed slash trapped inside a giant painting and then he sent his minion who was cleaning him out to do his bidding uh and if you go back to 60s shitty but fun rpg movies uh like the old sinbads uh the deities or patrons would always appear to their uh servants in a glass jar a mirror uh, or any number of things. And whenever I think of patrons, I always think, you know, I, I, I don't want them to just hear it in their head because that doesn't give a mystical aspect to it. So I would prefer it be uh, given an avenue that is more intriguing. Like, uh, let's say, during the campaign, these guys are all in a room looking at stuff. All of a sudden, the warlock looks down and, holy shit, his patron is in a potion an empty potion bottle and only he can hear him uh and maybe the p the other pcs notice or don't notice uh as for keeping the power uh i'll stick with my original uh you live to serve me so as long as you're serving me you will get to keep your power uh once you fail me uh, and I, I love carol's uh comment on that uh, you know, oh, well, he's got a female. If you look at another female, you got to go grovel. Uh, so I, I like that idea, too. But again, uh, as DM, I, I just, uh, A, uh, I suck at spellcasters. Uh, I, I, I mean, it, it is, 5e is my weakness. Um, I can do the drama and the RPG and stuff. Uh, I have read the books. I don't like a lot of the rules. It uh, took more than two hours to read. So when he hit that two hour mark, two hour he's read, not... you know, page 18, I, I think that's all the longer the player's handbook is page 18. Yeah, no. right? yeah, I, I wish they would have included spells. <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, no, I, I would envision uh, everybody's patron just appearing, you know, if you're wearing shiny boots, Every once in a while, you look down and your patron is, I told you to go get me the ring of Zabar, you son of a bitch, and make him trip, okay? Until you agree to go get the ring of Zabar, you're going to trip. You are not going to be able to run. God forbid the party flees. Uh, and I, what was part three of that question? I'm sorry. 
your favorite patron of the list? Vigo. Uh, Vigo the Carpathian. Fiend, great old one, Fay, he, celestial, he, he, or he, he'd have to be probably uh, a fiend. <laughs> fiend or great old one, I think, because he was what sixteenth, seventeenth century medieval tyrant. Uh, so yeah, okay, yeah, know, yeah, right around in there. But yeah, if you haven't seen Ghostbusters two, uh, it wasn't as good as the original. Uh, it's still pretty funny. Yeah, it's it's yeah. funny, but uh, Vigo the Carpathian is hilarious. Peter Mc, oh Peter McNichol, oh my god, <laughs> he was wow. awesome. Okay. as well now all three of you have just gone downtrodden where you know if you have a warlock patron eventually it's going to turn on you and if you don't become a enthralled spineless lovely do what i say oh you know what there's the other one dance for what's me the... puppet exactly <laughs> uh, uh what's the other one uh the there's blade. The... no the undead one. Oh, the undying the undying yeah that's right um mm -hmm. but going on that we had three that we didn't really mention we didn't really mention fiend either but you make a deal with the devil ghost rider so you know that's how that works uh, but other creatures you know maybe that doesn't end quite as badly as that you get a magic sword and you're the hero because it ended up being a knightly sword and now you're a knightly person too or Maybe your undying patron isn't quite as bad as what you... Yeah, you know what? Both of those are horrible. What about celestial patrons? And, you know, maybe a happy ending for the warlock that doesn't end with them casting away their power or being a, a marionette. Uh, Catholicism, the saints. Ooh. Chicago. Interesting thought. I, I actually the the one I kept forgetting too is the fact celestials could be patrons because it's just not like the old gods or the the, the obvious choices that I usually see. Um, I uh, that was the one I kept forgetting. Well, uh, and I, you know, with celestials, it may not be the gods themselves; it could be the titans, the messengers, a little a, lamp thing, planetar, angel. Um, yeah, it could be like my, I was thinking, you know, it's, it's not usually different, except for I don't have that sort of pact. And my, my paladin on Tuesdays is a Asimar and you have a, basically a, a, a guide. You have a spirit guide and hers is her mother who's an angel. Don't tell any of my players that nobody actually knows my character's backstory. Whoa, 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 whoa. They aren't watching. <laughs> Fuck those guys. Wow, come on. Wow, okay. What are we doing no, here then, uh, Carol, if your friends Heidi's aren't even watching? Heidi's in that game. She may be watching. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Arlo's in the other room right now watching this. Arlo, go to fucking sleep or I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you by your little baby toes. Kyle, for most of you who don't know, is a fiend. <laughs> I would be very interested in, in actually playing. A, I'd be very interested in actually playing a a warlock with a celestial patron. That could be fun. I've not, I've done it, but maybe it's something I want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. There's another campaign or something, you know? How about sure. a party of opposing warlocks that have to come together? Each one has to only help the other ones enough to not make their own patron angry. That's interesting. That's two. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to play that. That's an interesting concept. That's very challenging to play. And I, I've been, instead of been playing long enough, I'm looking for things that are challenging to do in this game. So Man, that's, that's just that's cool very similar to the rogues doing a heist where they're all going after the same object but at the end one of them wants it all to themselves mm -hmm. <laughs> very similar except they're better at lying <laughs> <laughs> yeah just just a game with only paladins only clerics only druids <laughs> I have a game. You know what? I told you I do have a I have a proposition for a game with only paladins, and we're mm -hmm. not good paladins. You know, I have one with clerics. It's a level eighteen. It's already written. It's in the books. I'm just waiting to run it. Mm -hmm. That's not true. I don't I, have it. I'm lying. 
I have an idea based on uh, Carol's uh, situation that she said discuss with uh, her patron. What if your character starts out as it's it's a fake uh, patron, but your character starts out with a very low charisma? We're talking physically; they are not attractive, and that's part of the fact. Pact set the fae changes them. You know, alters Head wound them. Barry. <laughs> not Barry. No, poor. Hey, Head, we created Head wound, wound Barry. <laughs> Actually, the thing is, we haven't learned totally about his backstory yet. We're learning. He was, we think he was a prince of some sort. And he was, because people, people have seen, you know, we saw, he saw a picture of himself and basically passed out. So, um, so there's that. And I, I don't And we're know going if, to end Carol right there because it's nine o'clock and we have to end but, right on fucking time. It is. And so was that so hard, Kyle? <laughs> it was it. Anyway, uh, real quick, we'll go around the table asking, you know, uh, patrons, how involved do you get with one shots? Because that's what we do around here. We obviously know everyone's idea on a campaign. Uh, and then if you have something off the top of your head or maybe a different creature that you would have as a patron, what would it be? Frank, let's start with you. Uh, an animated candle is your patron. And for a one-shot, uh, Kyle does it better than anybody else. Uh, he has the party come together, but one of them has an ulterior motive. Uh, and I would say the patron for the warlock would say, you don't have to help them completely. Okay, down to David, <laughs> a different creature than your normal patron. And, you know, what's a patron's role in a one-shot? Uh, patrons roll in a one shot. Mm -hmm. I don't know <laughs> because <laughs> because I mean yeah I mean any one shot that I've played the patron never really really came yeah. up or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. but I have change. an idea. Of, I have <laughs> to take note. Uh, I do have an idea for a patron. It's really cool. Kind of uh, based it on pop culture. Okay, oh. your patron is Dweeblix. The, the god of oozes and things like that. Symbiotic relationship. Oh. Ooze fuses with you or whatever, you've got to feed it. You know, venom, man. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I like that. Do you make your own uh, subclass for that? Or do you think you can steal from another uh, subclass and reflavor it? Uh, <laughs> you could probably steal from another subclass uh, subclass and reflavor it but one of the uh things that i said um about it is create your own spell list for it you know you got this symbiote you know i'm thinking spells like alter self uh enlarge Fire climb. enlarge reduce you know, spider camp Web is slow slow for huh? your victims sure. you know this creeping death coming after you we we discussed that a gelatinous so, cube spell mm-hmm mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Stun uh, and finally, Carol, we will end with you. A different creature as your patron, other than the ones listed already. And I think we kind of all, who knows what we'll do with a one-shot patron, unless you have something interesting to say. I do have something, I think. Uh, one-shot patron, basically you have to work with the players, the warlock, or you basically tell them that you're going to come up with their patron. Um, and, but you basically write the one shot around it. It's something you need to do or that player needs to do for his patron and the others are coming along to help. That's how you do it in a one shot. Sure. You, have, you basically would have to make them the center point of your one shot. Um, as for a different, I'm thinking, I believe it, I popped in my mind uh, a statue with some sort of mysterious being in it. You don't know what the nature of it is. You just... I kill it. <laughs> I push the statue over and release it upon the world. It's a, it's a little statue that you carry around. So... I carry I'd it. I'd like to thank the place. Academy. <laughs> but this thing convinced you to work with it. Sure. All right. Uh, everyone, that is between the roles. That's just patrons in general uh if people have more ideas we might delve into it 
further? Uh, possibly, probably not, because we're all <laughs> tired and we talked about shit too much, and this ended up being a shit show because of it. <laughs> so, everybody, watch us on Twitch, watch us on Twitter, YouTube, buy the crap in the store. Uh, everybody, wave goodbye. Discord, 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 Discord. Discord that other thing. Discord. Chat with us. Bye. 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 B